everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today, as you might be able to tell by the music, um, I'm doing something a little bit more spooky, just slightly spooky. Even though it's not Halloween yet, but it's never too soon for a little bit of a scare. And um, if you've seen my previous videos, then you may have seen some of my clown kids. And today I'm doing somewhat of a darker clown kid <laughs> that's looking a bit scary. Maybe you won't find it as scary. It could just be a boy wearing makeup for fun and smearing it all over his face. Or you could see a junior version of the Joker in it. I don't know, but to me it's kind of a creepy looking little boy <laughs> who has clownish makeup on his face and I'm working pretty monochromatically in watercolor mostly with a little bit of colored pencil in the end um, but yeah I'm working uh, wet and wet at first and then going wet on dry which gives me more control and I am, I don't want to say I'm a control freak, but for some things I really like to have a lot of control, which is funny that I would use watercolor in the first place in that way, because it's the kind of medium that you would have to make peace with its um, very complicated nature and just let it be whatever it wants to be and do whatever it wants to do and flow freely. But I guess I've found a way to make it work for me. And I really feel that the medium that you use depends on your personality a lot. Like a lot of people will find watercolor the most difficult. Others will find, I don't know, colored pencil probably more difficult. And it's just the type of person that you are and what you can handle and what's your way of working. And surely a lot of practice and experience goes into that as well. But there's just some things that's fundamentally ingrained in us and that we're naturally more drawn to. Um, despite that, I mean, you should listen to your personality and your likes and dislikes and interests. There are some things that I would like to change about my artsy practice. And one of those things would be my approach to a sketchbook. Um, I'm not really sure if there's a right or wrong way to use a sketchbook, but right now I have one that's for drawing and slightly more finished drawings, like not finished paintings um, like the ones you see on Instagram, but a bit more thought through. And one moleskin for um, just my thoughts and some visual ideas and a lot of writing actually. Where I'm a bit more free and not as worried about wasting paper and um, being things being pretty and things like that. But what I lack is the kind of sketchbook that's like an art journal where I process things that happen to me on a daily basis like I don't usually draw a lot of things that I see in everyday life and I feel that could be quite therapeutic and I know that some people do that successfully but for some reason I I don't know I haven't been the type of person to do that I have always written a lot in my journals but these days I'm not doing that, so trying to get my my feelings and my thoughts out in an artistic way would actually be quite fun. It's maybe you can't go into detail too much, but I really think it would um, help me process some things. So that's something I might want to change. We'll see. Um, Mostly also because I want to just make it a habit that I can't live without and just make it come more naturally instead of always telling myself like you haven't uh, sketched today, you should really sit down and do it and just have it be like 
brushing your teeth, which is not the most enjoyable thing, but you still do it because you got used to doing it and now it's a habit. So that's one thing I'm working on. The other thing is shooting my own reference photos. And that is a little bit more complex because I might need the help of somebody to do that for me or with me. I guess I could take some reference photos of my own, but most likely I will need the help of my husband and this has become very evident since I am working on a side project for myself. And I keep realizing that working from imagination just does not give you the same result, at least not at the same at the stage that I am at now. So I really want to get into the habit of shooting my own photos, just to be very original and... Um, I mean, I try not to infringe on any copyright anyway, but I also don't just want to copy, I want to create my own stuff and that's one step further in the right direction, I believe. And also in my day-to-day -day life, I would really like to be inspired by the mundane a bit more. I would like to see things differently. Like most of the time, I am inspired by art. Not just paintings, but um, all types of artistics. Artistic and um, artisan crafts even that I see in real life and online. And I would really like to not limit my muses <laughs> to those labeled art, but also just everyday things, because I do have an eye for aesthetic things, but for some reason that's two different worlds for me. Like if I see a beautiful garden, I might take a picture of it, but I never thought of using that picture as reference. I just I don't know, it's, it's stupid because I do have a lot of reference sitting somewhere on my computer, but um, I still haven't integrated um, my artsy eye, I guess, into everyday life. Um, I tend to wear masks, like, um, I guess you could say when I'm grocery shopping, I'm wearing the grocery shopping mask, and when I'm working, I'm wearing the working mask or hat. <laughs> and it's kind of sad that you have to be in an art mood and look for art specifically to be inspired, because everything can be inspiration. So that's something I am trying to remind myself of. And yeah, a lot of things that I really just want to change and improve, but that's part of the fun and thinking about it is really interesting because um, there's so many things that we do unconsciously without realizing it and then you stop to think about it for a minute and you know why you're doing it or why you want to do it and that's part of the journey I guess one thing that's really been bugging me about drawing and painting more is that I've gained weight. I gained another two pounds, which, is, which really sucks. I don't want to. It's, I, I eat healthy and I cook a lot from... I cook everything from scratch, really, except for the occasional, occasional um, takeout. But since I'm not moving as much, I used to have a lot of jobs where I would be physically active and now I'm not doing that. I'm sitting and drawing, painting more and that is really reflecting on my scale. <laughs> I'm not happy about that, so I will have to find a solution. I do do a little bit of dance workout at home, but obviously that's not enough. I take walks every now and then, but yeah, I will have to think about <laughs> um, how to find balance. How do you do it with um, hobbies like that that require you sitting for a long time? Or do you also have a job where you move a lot and walk around and things like that? I would be very interested, especially for the um, people above 35, because <laughs> that's when I noticed I could not eat the same as in the past anymore. By the way, tell me what kind of brushes you use, because I, as you can see, have a lot of round brushes. I find them very versatile because 
You can make broader strokes with them, but you can also paint with the tip and get into detail a bit more. I also have some flat brushes um, that are not as fancy. I mean, in general, my brushes aren't the fanciest because I'm a vegan and I try not to buy any products that were made from animal fur. Um, so they're not natural hair, they're synthetic, but I, I don't know, I, they're, they're enough for me. Maybe if I tried an, a natural hair or bristle brush, then maybe I would have some comparison and not like them so much anymore, but they're working for me right now. I do have a fan brush, but I don't use it as much. And then there is the filbert and... Other types of brushes, some people even use um, sumi brushes, like those really large sumi brushes for their watercolor. So tell me, what do you use? And also, um, do you use the same colors for acrylic, uh, the same brushes for acrylic as you would for watercolor? Because I actually use quite cheap brushes for acrylic in the past, because I just don't want to ruin my good ones. And I kind of feel the same way about wash right now. So tell me, what do you use? So we've come to the end of this painting. I hope you enjoyed it. And even though it's a little while until Halloween, it's not very far until October. And I really hope we have a nice October and I wish you a pleasant time and lots of pumpkins. Until next time, take care. Bye.